All right, um, we, we've been having an interesting time with um, Michael Eric talking about um, the national team adventure and also um, life as a professional and also person growing up um, in one of the most dangerous places um, in, 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 in Lagos, uh, Motion, and um, how he's been able to, to make um, his way um, as, as, as a person, as a professional, and also as, as um, um, how would I put it now, coming from a football background, somebody that is, um, has been around, around football for a very long time and also sports and being a professional. So um, he also spoke about um, the World Cup, what went wrong, or what should have been done um, better. Uh, when we come back now, we're trying to connect with him. When we come back, we'll, we'll talk about um, other aspects that we, we've not touched for the next um, one, hour, and then we'll try and wrap up and then uh, prepare for our next guest ahead of uh, Monday. Um, so, Mike, yeah, welcome okay. back. Um, who made it very easy for, for you to settle down um, in the national team? Uh, it's, a, oh, man. it's a bunch of guys. <laughs> it's a lot of people, man. Because, like I said, my uh, at one point in my career, I had to make a decision for myself, which was have longevity in my career first before I start tapping into other ventures, which is representing Nigeria, doing other things during the summer when I could rest. But um. You know, like I said, I, I spoke to a few guys before I even made a decision after the invitation came to through. I spoke to uh, Ike first, then randomly. Uh, I mean, I just showed him a text. I said, Ike, how's the national team? Where is it going to be? What's going to go happen? What's going to happen? Where are the players coming? And I spoke to Epe Udo right away. I said, do you want to do it? Do you want to go? He said he wants to. Then, you know, then I get to talk to my friends in Nigeria, Benga, my uh, – my cousin Tamiwa, his friends, my boy Buge, I, I got to talk to them about national team. Man, they convinced me, I tell you. <laughs> if you do it, you know, it will, it will be good. It will be something that you will never forget. And I'm like, I do have a full contract to be on a club, thankfully. I have to be careful. Yeah, but it's work up, insurance, you know, a lot of things were in place. But I'll tell you the truth is, being able to see what they were telling me was live this dream for us so we can live it through you was like, okay. So we can say, that's my boy. That's the one of the guys that I, 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 I grew up with. I'm talking about the, my guys I grew up with, you know, those kind of things kind of stuck with me. Then, you know, with, with someone like Ike being back and forth every window no problems, you know, always has shown up, always has dominated, always has been able to come back, you know, Ben Uzo, the same thing, you know, I kind of like reached out to him a little bit, but just seeing them after I met them in 2013, being able to continue, being able to change the culture, being able to just, you know, have that mentality like, yeah, this is our country, we're representing Nigeria kind of changed my mind because I grew up in Nigeria. I went to Baptist Academy. I, I live in Mushi. I did all these things. Why can't I re represent Nigeria as well in the World Cup, you know? But initially, it was more of trying to have longevity in my career first, trying to secure my 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 uh, my name in Europe as one of the bigs that can be dependent on if you need a big, something like that. So that was my first goal then national team became another ultimate goal after i was able to do those things let's look at the experience and then um i i know you you were you were popular with some some nigerians before you played for for the b tigers at the world cup but no the popularity the popularity doubled after the world cup adventure and then everything yeah if you were, if you were Let's probably turn back the end of time, 10 years, 
back. Would you have made that decision again to probably focus more on your club career? Or you look at it? No. Are you? no. no I, I think I would have... I would have played right away, but there was another thing that happened during those times. Like I said, when I was in the Orlando camp in 2013, I had an injury. So the injury put me back in a different perspective, which was you have to be healthy first. You have to have a career first. Cause I was still young. I was my second year, second year pro of yeah. First year after my first year pro, I was going to be in this, my second year. I needed, to I, I, w I had a different perspective. The perspective was be healthy. That's the first one. And the second one came about, you know, try to find your own lane in whatever whatever side you choose. Do you go to Europe? Do you stay in the US to do D League or do you continue to pursue the NBA? So these things, if they didn't happen, I probably would have been Tagging along with national team from day one, <laughs> for sure. Um, your reaction to the postponement of the my uh, yeah, it's uh, it's 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 tough to be honest because you know you don't know what's gonna happen, especially with with the COVID nineteen and how it would affect a lot of people, a lot of families, a lot of. A lot, all the economies, but at the same time, I think it was the right decision for for the Olympic Committee and you know FIBA to postpone it because it's more than basketball, it's more than sports, it's more than uh, it's more than any of these things right now because a lot of people are dying, and life and death situation matters more than anything relating to sports at this moment. Um, I know that you kind of grounded in Nigerian basketball and also the players um, past, present and probably if you have the skill or the talent, probably you know the people that will determine the future. Um, now let's stay with the, the, the guys in the past. Who will you describe as probably the all-time greatest to ever play for the national team? To ever play for Nigerian national team? Whew. That's really tough. I know some players that I can name. I don't think some guys would know these players. <laughs> uh, one that comes to my mind, I can't remember his first name, but I remember his nickname. <laughs> he used to play for the national team in, and he used to play in cantonment a lot. I'm trying to remember his name. I'll give you his full name in a second. I always looked up to him because all he did was he was very dominant. When I first saw him play, he was very dominant. I just can't remember his full name right at this moment. It will come to me. I'll hold that question. It will come back to me, and I'll, uh, <laughs> I'll give back to you. I think he was, in my opinion. But as of late, I'll give it to Big Ike, man. He's been dominant. He's been really dominant with the ability to score outside, the ability to finish inside, and, you know, just wear Nigeria all over him and just just represent Nigeria at a high class. I, I think he's he's up there right now. <laughs> um, I, I spoke to I spoke to Stanley on Monday. Yeah. Uh, spoke in glowing fashion about the big guy, captain yeah. of the team. Speaking to you today now on, on, on Friday, you're also speaking um, glowingly about him. I've been around the national team now for probably three, four years. And, you know, he has been that constant fix. You know, yeah, the yeah. Point between the, the old and the new. Now, you just want to know, what's, what's, about, what, what's about this, 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 this Ike? What's, what's about him? What's, what, can, you, can you figure it? If you're going out um, to, to describe there, there, this there, There's a random saying in America, I think. Real recognize real. You recognize a real human being when you meet Ike. He's straightforward. He's He jokes around once in a while here and there. <laughs> but he's straightforward. And he's he gets the job done. 
And that's real because you want to get the job done as a player. I'm saying for myself, you want to compete. You want to play against someone like him. But then you get to play against them. You go on head to head and y'all kicking each other's butt or he's kicking your butt and he gets the job done. And that's real. Real recognized, real. To me, in my opinion, he um, he does a lot of little things. He does a lot of good things. He did a lot of good things, too. When he was a player in the NBA, when he was a player in China, and that's longevity, too. That Those are things that makes him even a very, very dope individual because he has done so much, either under the radar, in the spotlight, consistency, consistency, consistency. That's all I can say. You know, it's pretty It's pretty amazing to see. Let me put you on the spot. Um, I asked um, Philly Chanona this question. Uh, yeah. I think Wednesday. If you name the, the team coach for Nigeria today as the head yeah. coach with the, the current squad that we have presently yeah. able to Nigeria, pick your first five. My first five starters right now? Okay, that's a good spot to be on, but I'm I'm a player's player, and uh, I'll go with Ben at the at the point for sure. Uh, based on statistics and based on analysis, I will go with Alfaruk at the three. I'll go with the two spot is so tough. There's so many tough guards on the two spot that right now I don't even know. Okay. Just for the sake of conversation, for sure I'll go with Irebu at the two, just to start. And at the four, I'll go with Ike. And at the five, I'll go with Epe. All right. Um, like, no brainer, for sure. No, no problem. <laughs> <laughs> um... 2021, 2022 is going to be a very busy season because at the international stage, because you know, looking at the fact that uh, programs for 2020 shifted and crashed with the ones of 2021. So we're going to have um, qualifiers for the Nations Cup. We're going to have um, Afro basket tie, um, to play um, in 2022. We're going to also have the big one, the Olympics. Yeah, your protection as a member of the national team. It would be, it would be one of those things for sure. It would be another challenge. It would be a very, very interesting period, an interesting time for us to represent Nigeria. We'll have to be ready for any situation because I think once the World Cup is, uh, once the Olympics is over, the qualifier will be next, right? We have to be ready for that. We have to try to um yeah it will be challenging for sure there's no no other word for that it will be very challenging it will be challenging on the body and uh on even the coaches because some players might not be able to make it because maybe they have to go to their clubs you know the decision making so it'll be challenging but uh you know it's something we couldn't control obviously it's out of everyone's control because of this COVID-19 but uh yeah it will be challenging what would be what would be the benchmark going to the Olympics? Going to the Olympics, the benchmark. I think I think dominance. We just have to go in there and dominate it. There's no other way. We have to dominate and win. There's no So are you are you saying that Nigeria can win the Olympic or you're just aiming too high? Probably aiming for the no. sky and fall with There's them. no there's there's no way you can limit him. When you have a team like ours and a bunch of determined players like the ones we have, I think we have a chance to win win it all if we if we commit ourselves, if we do the right things, if we prepare ourselves. It was far fetched, but it's doable. It's countries have done it, right? But the, the question will be, how will we be managed? The question will be, how will we be prepared? What will be the infrastructure given to us to prepare us for that? Because it's doable. All these players that we have on our roster are playing high-level basketball. They're playing all over the world. They're playing in the NBA. 
They're playing in Yearly. They're playing in China. So my point, to be exact, is we're going to play against the same caliber of players. They're playing in Euroleague. We're playing in China, playing in the NBA, in the Olympics. So put us in a better position so we can try to dominate and win. So that's meaning better infrastructure when we get a chance for training. Uh, the management should understand what we need at the moment, if it's rest, if it's training, if it's talking to the players individually, seeing Formal. what they Yeah, formally and all these things, you know? So I think we have a chance. There's no yeah. limit to my aim. I think we can win it all if we do it. You didn't mention more money. If if it's about more money. <laughs> like I said, I put I put down for in both language, infrastructure. <laughs> <laughs> They're gonna understand. <laughs> uh, uh, okay, okay. Um yeah. now somebody is asking you is that out of all the emerging talents, the established talents that we have scattered all over the world. And then your set target of having the podium finish at the Olympics. Who and who and who and who and who do you think should be added into the current roster that we have right now? For me, I, I, that's, that's out of my control. But if I would say we need, we need someone a defensive presence. We need someone that can also help us on defense and also help us. I don't know names that will be available, but for to be honest, we just need maybe another defensive presence because defense win games from my experience. So whoever is available or whoever has a defensive mentality that will be on the table, I think will be a better, better choice, in my opinion, to add to the roster. I don't know who will be available, but to the to the current roster, I think you need one solid defender, overall defender. It doesn't have to be a guard, doesn't have to be a forward. It could be an all-around defender. We just need one, and it will be dope. Um, what do you think about um, Jalil Okafor's um, commitment to play for Nigeria at the World Cup, um, at the Olympics? And also, what does that portend for your chance? <laughs> I mean, it's a it's a good call because then he's you know following his his father's footstep or is is a calling like which is he's a Nigerian uh, American born in uh, you know Nigerian American pretty much right, but at the same time we have competitions where you have to earn it. You know he's an NBA player. I understand there's a lot of things that could happen, but there will be a position where he's never played word, word, um, word competitions. You know, there'll be a position where he has no experience in that. He has experience in the NBA. He's an amazing player in the NBA. Respect to him. But sometimes it comes down to experience, to have you played against European style of basketball. The spacing is different. The strategies are different. The, the the way of defending is different, you know. NBA is different also. NBA is a lot of space. It's a lot of entertainment for the NBA. It's a lot of razzle-dazzle with the NBA. You know, there's a lot of things that could be put in perspective. As for me, I'm not really worried about what I can do, uh, what he can do. I'm worried about what I can do, which is what I can do at the end of the day, you know. It'll be, it'll be good. It'll be good to a great addition. But it's part of the game, you know, competition. You compete and you do your best. Um, you've played with Jordan Wara before. Um, yeah. But before he got injured. Now, recently declared um, for the 2021 NBA draft. Um, what are the prospects of Jordan succeeding and then bringing his A game to the NBA? He has a high chance of being a very prolific scorer in the NBA. As you can see, he can score. He can play basketball at a high level with a high intensity. My advice for him when he gets close to the NBA is work on defense, focus on defense, and you're going to have a long career. Like I believe 
he's that good of a player because he would have a long career in the NBA. He did help him with other stuff, not just the prolific scoring, but they can help him with other stuff. Uh, thanks for that um, honest opinion. Um, some people are asking you, at this time of lockdown, people are battling to survive and um, looking at basketball in Nigeria, uh, in terms of infrastructure, uh, kids not having access to 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 shoot to shoes and um, to to kids balls to play. You, you spoke about your experience how you went to Yabat for Ben Dance today, you know, to buy your first basketball shoe for three fifty naira. Any any plan to to give back to the kids in Nigeria? Yeah, as I've always tried to do it almost every summer as much as I could. I don't make it publicized as most people do it, you know, oh, I bring shoe here and there. And uh, I I have a group of people in the national stadium that I just drop shoes for, you know, when I whenever I come, I bring tons of shoes, different sizes. And luckily for me, it's, it's helped a little bit for those kids that are available during those time. You know, I'm not looking for any accolades for that. I'm not looking for any... You know, I'm trying to say like, but at the end of the day, I do try my best whenever I come to the U.S. I bring, I, whenever I come to Nigeria from U.S. or wherever I'm playing, I bring my teammates fairly used shoes, my my shoes used, brand new, as much as I can, as much as I can carry with me, I bring them to the U.S. But I feel like sometime in the future, towards the end of my career, I'll have more time to set up like a more of a, a non-profit organization where I can be able to do a shoe drive and all these things. At the moment, I'm occupied with, like you said early in our interview, adapting to a new society everywhere I go, adapting to a new team, adapting to a new league. I'm always occupied with that, especially moving from one side of the country, one side of the world to another side of the world to go play. But uh, giving back is is being part of my family tradition. My dad did it all his career. He gives back to a lot of people in the National Stadium, brings cleat, go, uh, cleats, jerseys, and all these things randomly when he had it. Uh, I get a chance to do that once I'm available. If I, whenever I come to Nigeria, I always bring as much as I can carry with me and just give it to the people in the National Stadium because I remember as a kid trying to find a size 14, size 15. It wasn't easy. I know it's not that easy as much, but uh, by his grace, I'll be able to do some sort of a shoe drive with more of a wide scale thing, maybe nationwide or something. Once, once I'm getting more, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Once I'm almost towards the end of my chapter yeah, as a professional athlete. Um, your take on the latest addition to the technical bench um, when the Nigerian Basketball Federation named Mike Brown as the technical advisor for the national team. Sorry, repeat the question? Your take? Yeah. Mike, Mike Brown. Coach Mike Brown yeah. being named okay. director of technical advisor for the national team. What does that yeah. pretend? It's pretty good. It's a big move. It shows that the Federation is taking real consideration in our talents now. It shows that the uh, Federation is trying to accomplish something here, which is a big, big move, you know. And uh, it's it's unique that it's bringing a you know, non-Indigenous coach into our situation again but at the same time we're bringing a lot of skill a lot of firepower again to the national team it's it will help us learn the game from another another perspective learn give us another opportunity to learn the nba style of game that we might use to learn the winning style of game he had when he was a, you know as a coach being a winner in the nba so it's good it's good in my opinion Let's digress a bit and um, look at your club career. You came close to playing in the NBA. You tried out for so many clubs, 
2012, they joined uh, Cleveland Cavaliers for the um, Summer League. Um, you were waived in October. You got you you, you also had stints with um, Philadelphia 76ers, um, Golden State Warriors during the Summer League in 2013. Um, in 2014, you were, September 2014, you were signed to Milwaukee Bucks. Um, later got waived in October mm-hmm. of the same year. Um, how, how close was this? And then what were the underlying factors that you couldn't make it finally to the NBA? Uh, I, I've always asked that question to tomorrow, to be honest, because all those... All those teams you mentioned, I've always had an opportunity to to be on that roster for a long time or for good. I signed some 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 of the contracts I signed were actual multi-year contract, but I just for some reason something never never something always happens, right? But uh, the one thing I've taken out of it is it's made me stronger. It's made me have more of a faith in God that. Things happen for a reason. What's yours is going to be yours, and what's not yours is not yours. So, to be honest, I've looked back a few times to say I was there. I was averaging this amount of points and rebounds during my time there. Why didn't I make the final cut? Uh, I can't dwell on it anymore, but uh, I think it was more of I wasn't destined to be there. <laughs> right? That's the only way I can see it. But so, I've also had I've also had an amazing career in Europe. I won a Euro, Euro, European con- competition. I've I've played on one of the best teams in Europe. I'm playing for one, currently another best team in Spain. So at the same time, it's a blessing in disguise, in my opinion. Maybe I wasn't destined to be a full NBA player. Maybe I was supposed to try another path. So I tried. That's the best part. One thing my dad always tells me: do your best and leave the rest. I did my best. I tried. I played well, but uh, I stopped dwelling on it after a while because it was not for me. So I'm I'm, I'm focusing on what's in front of me more and what I'm doing at the moment and what I'm doing to impact and inspire others, which is you can have a career in, NBA, in Europe if the NBA doesn't work out. You can play at the highest level in Europe and provide for your family at the same time and also be able to play against the ex-NBA players that do come to Europe. So you get best of both worlds. They leave the NBA, they come to Europe and see you, and you're the man. (laughs) Maybe. Uh, Let's look at it now. How rewarding has it been for you playing basketball? It's, it's, It's been a blessing, to be honest. It's been a blessing because I can't, I can't imagine. (laughs) We don't want the blessing. Eh? Want... Well, not well, blessing, though. Know. In terms of money, how rewarding has it been playing in the, in the <laughs> pro, pro, pro basketball? Um, playing pro basketball, I can say it's better than not playing basketball at all or not doing anything. <laughs> 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 no, to be honest, though, to be honest, it's been a, it's been a blessing. You're able to provide for your family. You know, you're able to inspire others i think because then you know people might have lose hope thinking man ain't no money in basketball there's people you know you know as a nigerian as a nigerian parent growing up you know that they would tell you ah basket sports come on gotta be a doctor or lawyer you know you know that but we've been able to break those barriers and do into other things sports media Media now is making more money than anything. Hearts and crafts are making more money than anything, you know? So, <laughs> media is making money now. <laughs> Not in Nigeria. Before they would start thinking, oh, this guy. <laughs> <laughs> no, but that's the that's the thing. Like I said, it's a blessing because, you know, it's also providing for you. You're having something better than nothing, in my opinion, being able to play sports and being able to also inspire others to do it. You know, so. It don't change uh, life for sure. <laughs> oh no, wahala! Uh, you've had stints, like I mentioned before, in Europe, um, Turkey, Greece, uh, Spain. Um, also, you've played in the D League. 
um, memorable mem memorable moments for you um, at these different um, locations and and, um, and teams and leagues? Uh, a lot. It's a lot. But uh, I'll start with the D League. Uh, I. I remember in the D League, my goal was to make the NBA again, being in D League. But with that, I end up, I ended up being top five in like four categories: rebound points, no, not rebound blocks, uh, efficiency, and steal or something like that. In that year, I was playing in D League. So for me, not making the NBA was the ultimate goal. But those accomplishments also stayed in the stat book at that, that year. So um, I'm grateful for that. Uh, I went to Greece right after that D-League season to win a, a – a, it was like a third-place position in the Greek League after the first two teams won the first, first and the second. The third place was really important for that club because then they get to – be able to one. sign more players the next year or be able to have more sponsorship. So for them and me being able to help them at that year felt special because I saw how genuinely happy that team was for them to be able to do that the next year in Greece. So that was cool. And that was a good accolade I have in my trophy <laughs> trophy room. Uh, I came to Spain after that. Had a very, very good year in Spain. Uh, didn't win... But the season went well. The community was amazing. They took me in, Bilbao, Spain. They they helped me out a lot to establish myself more in Europe. And I went to a team in Turkey, Dar Shafaka. We won the Euro Cup championship that year, the year I was there. Amazing memory, man. Amazing memory. Played last year in the Euro League. Had a great season there. A couple of Good games, MVP games I had. Pretty good. It was a pretty good career so far. And this season, you know, unfortunately to COVID-19, we had an opportunity to try to do something, I think. <laughs> um, you signed for Basconia in um, July 2019, um, a few weeks to the World Cup. Um, if you had the opportunity to, to have waited probably till after the World Cup, um, would you have done so before penning a uh, contract with um, Basconia? Probably. Have, probably. Have probably. But, uh, you know, sometimes when when teams want you, they show all the interest. They do it at a high level where they can't, they can't stop calling. You know, they will call you to, the, to you say yes or no. You know, something like that. But at the same time, the opportunity to play for a club like this, the the blessings involved, <laughs> <laughs> the, the opportunity to play for a club like this, uh, not to be honest, is more like you can't turn it down unless another club comes with a better offer. So at that moment, before the World Cup started, it was more like a decision to be made. Either I do it or wait, and hopefully God gives me something better. But God is the one knocking on and saying, hey, this is something for you right now, so why not take it? Okay, I think that's... After the World Cup, after your performances starting against um, Korea, where yeah. attempts by other clubs to probably um, approach you, not knowing whether you signed for your other club or something like that. Like there, yeah, they were. There were some clubs, there were some Asian clubs because, you know, the Asian market was still open at that time to sign some new players. But uh, unfortunately, with a, with a club like this, once you sign, you're locked in based on the contract. And I was already locked in. <laughs> and there was no raving back from them. They were not letting that happen. Even if I played terribly in the World Cup or not, and they were not letting that happen. <laughs> We we have some players in in Spain, um, likes of um, Stanley Okoye. Um, for the Tigers, we we have uh, um, Adara Lono. We are, we have um, Elo Edefiorioka. We used to have uh, what was her name now? 
Evelyn, Evelyn Akata, playing in Spain. How much of hanging out do you guys do? Do 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 you see your phone? Do you do you hang out? I mean, it's we we don't even get a chance to because it's too far away from each other. But um, whenever I got a chance to play like Stan's team, I got to go to dinner with him. I went to have, you know, conversation, a few hours of conversation with him. So it was good. But you know, with the other other teams and that if we're not playing them or we don't have a match against them or we're not in their city, it's so hard to to um, really travel around per se because you have time practices in different weird times of the day based on the availability of the gym and all this stuff, you know. So up school, yeah, my best <laughs> academic guys are hitting me up <laughs> up here. Biggest challenge ever faced as a as a man. Sorry? Biggest challenge ever faced as a man. Whew. Right now is having a two year old in the house. <laughs> <laughs> Trust me, that's the biggest challenge. Or being a father, to be honest. Being a father and also being able to be a professional athlete while you're being a parent is one of the biggest challenge because it's not Ooh. easy. Sorry. Um Nepal just did their thing. Up Nepal. Yeah, let me let me sorry. Let me go back and sorry. 